Hey leader, David Burke is here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about what makes for a great remote worker. What should you look for when you're looking to hire that new member of your newly remote team? Most team leaders, heck, most senior leaders probably would have headed into 2020 assuming they didn't need to know anything about how to hire people remotely. But as we all got forced into a work from home experiment that shows very little signs of ever ending, we need to think about what makes for a great remote worker even more. We also need to think about what makes for a great remote team. But the members of the team, the knowledge, skills, abilities, and also the soft skills that they bring to the team are going to have a massive effect on the team and then a reciprocal effect back, not only on that person you hired, but everybody else who was already a part of the team. And so in this episode, we're gonna talk about the three things you need to think about when you're hiring a remote worker. What makes for a great remote worker? And obviously here, there are minimum qualifications. There are knowledge, skills, abilities, past experiences that affect whether or not they can do the technical elements of the job. We're not going to talk about that because you know what those are and you know what they were in a co-located environment as well. We're going to talk about those soft skills. We're going to talk about the things that they need to have in their personality or maybe in their experiences that they've grown over time that'll make them a great member of the team. And most importantly, how those things compare to the existing team. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to know when we're looking for great remote talent is, are they collaborators? You might think that collaboration isn't all that important in a remote team, but the truth is collaboration is actually more important. I say often that talent flows from teams because no individual is responsible for individual performance anymore. We've known this for decades now that my ability to do my best work depends on the team members that I'm a part of, the resources that I have access to, the organizational culture that I am a member of. Talent flows from teams. And in remote work, even though you're asking your people to work alone together, what we're actually asking them to do is coordinate periods of time where they have to collaborate and communicate and coordinate periods of time where they have to work solo. And that makes those collaboration moments even more important. So we wanna know whether or not these people are great collaborators. And the way that we can do that is, is a couple different ways. I mean, the first is that we want as many members of the team having a say in whether or not that person gets hired as we can. Some organizations go so far as to create an internship or a trial period where people are hired either probationally or told they're hired for a flat rate to do temporary work. And in doing that work, they interact with people that will be the future member of their team. Other organizations uh, play around with group or panel interviews where you're meeting a bunch of different people on the team, not just the individual manager. Whatever you use to get a full sense of that person's personality. You could also ask them interview questions about how they collaborate best. You could ask them to give you an example of a time they were on a team that they felt like was really great, what made it great. You could ask the opposite. What did they do when they were on a team that was really terrible to work with and what made it terrible? And the thing you're looking for if you're asking those questions is not not necessarily whether or not they just trash their old teams and that sort of thing. What you're looking for is the whys. What about that team made it hard to collaborate? What about that team made it great to collaborate? And then does the team that you are interviewing this person to join, does that team, does that team have those same characteristics? That's going to matter a lot. Not just are they collaborators, but the collaboration style. Talent flows from teams, especially in remote teams. And so whether or not somebody is a collaborator is going to have a massive effect on well, on their ability to collaborate and hence on the team's ability to work well together. Now, the second thing you want to look for, the second question you want to answer is, are they communicators? Are they great communicators? Because everyone communicates. Some people are great at it. Some people are meh and some people are legitimately terrible. Communication is the lifeblood. It's the oxygen of any relationship, especially somebody's relationship with a team. Your ability to coordinate work, to collaborate, which was the first one, is going to depend on your ability to communicate. And we're talking about communication in all forms. Yes, this means uh, are they great on a Zoom call, so we're going to do an interview there. And are, are they good in a meeting? We might want to do a kind of a panel interview so that we can see how they work and how they talk to multiple people. But let's not forget things like audio only calls. In fact, there's a lot of research that suggests that people are actually more emotionally attuned to each other when they only have audio. Surprising findings, but, but true. And text communication is still, for the time being, the number one way that we are going to communicate with a remote team. 
And so whether or not they communicate in all of these mediums, especially that written communication factor, is a, a big deal. And we want to plan the interview process accordingly. We want to know, can they be on that Zoom team meeting? Can they handle an individual audio-only interview? We want to dive deep into the emails that they're sending throughout this whole process. And we want to especially look at their cover letter, right? Because the cover letter is literally you making the case of why you should be hired for the team. And the way that they're going to express their ideas and make the case for why those ideas should be adopted is likely going to be in written format. So the cover letter matters. It, it actually didn't matter for like 20 years, but it matters again. How people communicate that matters. We're looking for clues on how they communicate. And we're especially looking for clues about how the ways they communicate match the ways our team already communicates. Or I guess if we want to get better at communication, how maybe they can help the rest of the team get better. But we want to make sure there's a fit here. It's not enough to be a great communicator in one medium if nobody uses that medium. It's not enough to be a great communicator of uh, argumentation and persuasion if your team doesn't actually do a lot of creativity by friction, right? So we don't, not only do we want to make sure that people are great communicators, we want to make sure that they are the right communicators for our team. Now the third question we need to ask is, are they self motivated. Now you might think this should be the first question, right? Because when we think about remote work, we think about it being done alone. But remember that it's actually working alone together. And so that's why our two other questions, are they collaborators and are they communicators, matter um, even more. But we do need them to be self-motivated. Whether or not somebody can get up and get out of bed and get to work on time without the threat of a boss standing there at the office door making sure that at 9 a.m. everybody is there. If they can get themselves up and get working, actually whatever hours of the day they want to work, if they can get themselves focused and they're intrinsically motivated to do the work, that's going to matter. How well somebody is self-motivated affects whether or not they're going to do any of the work. And we can use a couple different things as a proxy for how self-motivated they are. Do they have past experience on remote teams? Long-term past experience, right? Uh, multiple different years and good performance. If they joined a remote team and got fired two months later because they're slackers, well, we, we want to know that. But we also don't want to just look at work experience because for a lot of people, their experience of remote work started in March 2020. We all remember what happened in March 2020 and it was forced upon them. And so some people might only have nine months to a year of remote work experience. So we need to look at other things. Were they freelancers before they were remote workers at any point in their history? Were they entrepreneurs? They might have chosen to go the way of joining a larger organization because the market didn't respond to their ideas, but they were good at being self-motivated enough. We could also ask questions about habits and hobbies. Uh, early on in uh, 2020, when everybody was shifting to remote work, one of my friends actually expressed a sense of doubt on whether or not he could do it, whether or not he could work from home and be self-motivated without the office there waiting for him. And I told him, of course you can, of course you can do this. And when he asked why I was so confident in his ability, I said, it's because you're a triathlete. You get up every morning and go ride for 80 miles on a bike without anybody making you do it. I think you can open up your laptop at the right time and get to work. So we want to look at that, right? Do they have habits and hobbies that are self-motivated? Do they have prior work experience that indicates that? We want to answer that question, are they self-motivated? It may sound like the most common sense thing, that the ability to be self-motivated affects whether or not people will work alone, but it's something we can often overlook. Now we need to take all of these three questions together. Are they collaborators? Are they communicators? And are they self-motivated? And we need to remember that there isn't a right answer. I mean, no to the self-motivated question. Okay, there is a wrong answer. There's a couple of wrong answers actually. But what matters more is how well they connect with the rest of the team. If the team works in an environment where there's a daily stand-up every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern and they're also in the Eastern time zone, then self-motivation may not be as big an issue as if we only ever talk a couple times a month as a whole team, right? So the level to which that matters. Same thing with communication and collaboration. The level to which your team collaborates affects whether or not we need somebody to be a strong collaborator or just an okay collaborator. And the way in which people communicate matters more than whether or not they're great communicators. They could be great public speakers, but they're probably not going to be doing that much in this remote work world. So we need to judge whether or not what they're doing matches us. The best way I know to do this, by the way, and it's one I already hinted at, is to involve as many people and as many mediums in the interview process as possible. You want people looking for the answers to those three questions, and you want people looking for whether or not they match the existing team to create a sense of fit. 
We know that individual performance flows from the team somebody's on. And so it's in our best interest and in their best interest to answer these questions. Are they collaborators? Are they communicators? And are they self-motivated? If we do that, then we know that we are looking at a great remote worker and hopefully we're looking at a great new teammate. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, make sure you're subscribed or following this channel. And if you really liked it and you want to go deeper, then check out the resources we have for you at davidberkuscom resources. Guaranteed there's something in there that'll help you and your team do your best work ever.